Hi guys and welcome to a donut tutorial. Now this is one of my favourite lessons that we do in school. I absolutely love it. Um, so it's really important to me that you get, get to have a go while you're at home as well. So I'm just going to get straight into it and tell you what you're going to need. So the first thing that you're going to need is a newspaper and this is going to be for the basic construction and to keep obviously your table or your work surface safe. You're going to need some masking tape. You're going to need some toilet roll. Now I'm hoping that everybody has access to toilet roll at home. You won't need too much, um, but we don't have, unless you have white tissue paper at home, sorry, of course you can use that, but this is just easily accessible to everyone. I'm hoping most people have it. You're then gonna need some paper mache paste. Now I have done a tutorial on my channel, go and have a look at how to make that. You can make it a few days in advance to save you some work. Um, and there's loads of other tutorials out there on how to make some paper mache paste and yeah it does look a bit minging but you won't get this task done without it. And then towards the end you're obviously going to need some paints. I don't have mine to hand because this first half of the tutorial needs doing well in advance. So let's get straight into it. Right so the first thing that I'm going to do then guys is I'm going to take two or three sheets of my newspaper. And I'm going to do this separately, but I'm just going to scrunch them up. So I've scrunched them um, horizontally, not vertically, okay? So I've got two pieces that I've scrunched up. And then I'm just going to put them together and try and form a, a donut shape, a circle like this. that's going to be too big so it might have to overlap which is absolutely fine I think that's a good start so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that ping back out and I'm going to start tearing off some longish strips of masking tape you can use any tape but masking tape is easier to paper mash it over because it's got a paper like texture rather than a shine texture so about that size I'm going to rip four or five off and just stick them to my table for easy access. So I'm going to um, fold this back up into its circle and straight away here I know I want this edge to stick down so I'm just going to use some of my masking tape and stick that piece together. And I'm then going to stick the end down as well. Okay, so I've got a basic donut shape. However, I can see how big that hole is in the middle. If I had a donut with a hole that big, I wouldn't be very happy. So I'm going to carry on adding some more bits of newspaper until I've got it to the size that I want it to be. my donut we can go ahead and start paper mache in this now uh, paper mache we're going to do that because it's going to make this a lot sturdier it's going to make it really hard at the minute i could just squash that if i wanted to and i don't want to be able to just squash it even though donuts are soft but it's also going to give us a nice surface to paint over and add some details on top if we want to if you wanted to you could even create a donut now where you could cut into it and create like a bite mark out of it if you wanted to you could do a giant one you could do a couple of um, different ones like a crispy creme box you could go and get one of them from tesco and display them in a crispy creme box there's loads of different things that you can do but what we're going to need now is some pieces of newspaper so i've just used one sheet of newspaper and i've ripped it up into small chunks so that it's going to be manageable to paper mache around. You don't want them to be too thick, otherwise you're going to get a really difficult and um, hard to manoeuvre piece of paper around the curves. But you're also going to need um, tissue paper because that's going to be a final layer as it's going to make it white. If you have white tissue paper, you can use that, as I did already say, but 
tissue paper is just going to give us a nice pale surface to paint onto. Now, all you're going to need for the tissue paper, because I'm sure parents out there are wondering how much tissue paper you're going to want, you're only going to need five sheets. So get five sheets of um, toilet roll and then just chop them into three strips. And that should be enough. If we need a little bit more than that's fine, but we won't need a lot. I find that cutting the toilet roll is much better than ripping. When you rip it, you get these really awkward shapes that will just not look very neat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my newspaper as a mat to keep my table clean. And I'm just gonna start dunking my newspaper into my paper mache mixture and smoothing it around my donut. Now this does feel really odd because the mixture is so lumpy and gloopy. But what I would recommend that you do first, and this is why we cut up our paper beforehand because this is just gonna get completely stuck to my hands now, is I would smear some of the paste onto your donut as a base ready for the paper to stick to. And then you want to put a small strip of paper on top and add another layer of mixture. Now I wanna aim for about two or three layers of newspaper. Okay, so now I've covered my donut in paper mache using my newspaper. And as you could tell by the end there, it gets incredibly sticky. Now, I've done two or three layers and I haven't even used all of my newspaper, so I could keep going if I want, but I'm conscious that I'm now going to use the toilet roll. In fact, I won't touch my jugs, everything will get sticky. So what I'm going to go ahead now and do, or try to do, is use my toilet roll on top while this is still tacky. Now this is going to be a really sticky, messy job. So just try and persevere with it. And we only want one layer of this really, um, just to make this a little bit paler to paint on. Okay, so a little tip with the toilet paper is try not to touch it too much, otherwise you'll see it all starts flaking away as it's doing on my fingers here, you'll see on here. And try to make sure you're using enough of the paste. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to lie a piece on the top, I'm getting quite a bit of paste, and I'm lying it in the middle to try and keep it still, and then I'm just smoothing down the sides, and then that's almost enough of touching the um, toilet roll, otherwise it will just start to crumble. Okay, so now I've smoothed, smoothed that down as much as I can. You'll see there's still some bits that flick up and are tearing away and that's absolutely fine don't worry about it too much because when we come to paint we can always stick them back down now as tempting as it is to keep playing with this and trying to smooth everything out i'll just be doing it more damage than good now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave it on my um, work surface and i'm going to oh, on my uh, paper or mat sorry and i'm going to put this somewhere to dry for at least 24 if not 48 hours now on top of a radiator is fine but sometimes that you find that they can crack because of the the drying quickly so i'm just going to go and put this out of the way and forget about it for probably two days and i'll come back to it to decorate it then okay so it's a few days later my donut is dry and it's nice and sturdy and now we're on to the fun bit which is the painting which i've been so excited for so I don't have any uh, proper paint mats at home, so I'm just using some more scrap paper. I've got my lovely little flamingo mug with some water in. I have a paintbrush, and I'm at home, so I don't have all my resources either. So I've got a little Tupperware lid to do some paint uh, mixing. And of course, I've got some paints, which I picked some of these up in Home Bargains for about 99p, which is a bargain. I've also got a little tub because there is an element of pouring to this, okay? We're going to be proper donut makers here. 
And then last but not least, I've got some coloured paper because I like to have some sprinkles on the top of my donuts, but I could only find pink paper, surprise, surprise. The first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to try and paint all of the base and the inside in a kind of doughy colour. Now I'm going to leave the top white so that the pigment of the icing colour is really prominent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some doughy colour. Now this burnt sienna colour I picked up from Home Bargains for about 99p as I already said. So I'm just going to mix this with some white um, to make a paler dough colour and then maybe, we'll see how it goes, maybe a little bit of yellow. on here it's a nice colour but it's very peachy brown so I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of yellow um, just to change the colour and the hue slightly. Okay, now that's given me a doughy colour that I'm more um, pleased with. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and I'm going to paint from about halfway down all the way around and into the middle here. But I want to leave the very top white. Now, can you see how I'm using this stippling method? So I'm bouncing my paintbrush up and down rather than stroking. If I stroke, I'm not going to get into all of the cracks of the newspaper that we used in the tissue paper. So I'm stippling. Okay, and I'm just going to bring it up the sides slightly. And don't worry about any grey bits poking through down here from the newspaper because we can give this another layer if we want but plus the main thing is the donut is going to be this way up so you won't be able to see underneath anyway. So now what I'm going to do and this is the bit that I've been waiting for because this is so much fun is I'm going to create my icing for the top so I want to be able to pour this over so that icing is going to drip down the sides like an actual donut. So in order to do that, first of all, we need to mix the colour and we're going to need plenty of it. Now, I am obviously going to go with pink because that is my favourite colour. I'm going to use a tiny bit of red. And can you guess what colour I'm going to, or what tint or shade I'm going to add to that to make it into a pink? That is going to be white. Now, I'm going to use quite a bit more white. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that together with a clean brush and see if I like the colour. So to make my pink a little bit more vibrant, in fact no, I'm pretty pleased with that colour. Yeah, I like that. But you can see already this is not going to pour out of this pot. Okay, it's too thick, it's too sticky. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to add small bits of water to it until it looks like it could pour, but it's not going to be too watery for the donut. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you can see I've added a really small amount of more water and I'm just going to mix that in. Mix it in really well. There's no lumps at all. Okay, so that is a bit like, but it's, it's got almost like a milkshake con consistency to it, okay? So you can see it's, it's quite sticky, it'll stick to the sides, but it will pour quite freely. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now, and this might not work because I don't think we did like this when we were in school last time, but I'm going to give it a go, is I'm going to slowly pour my icing over the top of my donut, And I want to try my best to fill all of this space. So here we go. And this is why you need the mat. Okay, that's worked perfectly. Now you'll see that there's still some white bits here. That's fine. 
because if we try and pour that all over, it's going to fill all the sides, which we don't want. So now all I'm going to do with a dry brush is I'm going to spread the paint that's on there around with my stippling effect. I'm just going to spread it out. Okay, and now all we need to do is wait for this to dry. Okay, so while that's just been drying for a little bit, I've cut out some sprinkles that are going to go on the top of my donut. Now, annoyingly, when I'm in school, I would use a hole punch because they look amazing. Put some little hole punched coloured paper on the top for sprinkles. But like the rest of us, I'm using the resources that I've got at home and I don't have a hole punch. So what I did was I cut out a little strip of paper, a yellow one and a pink one. And all I do is very carefully, because my fingers, I just snip really thin pieces of that paper onto my little Tupperware lid here. And I will sprinkle them on at the end. But when we sprinkle them on, the paint has to be not wet, but it has to be just a little bit glossy still, a little bit tacky. Otherwise, we're going to sprinkle them onto a dry donut and they're just going to fall off. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to find my sauce for the top of my donut because I'm not going to leave my donut like this. I want it to look amazing. So like before, when I mixed up the pink paint to pour over the top, I'm going to do the same thing, but with a different colour. And this time I'm going to use yellow. Now, I actually think I might do two sauces on the top and have a bright pink and yellow on top, but let's go with the yellow first. So I'm not going to need as much because it's only for drizzle on top. I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow in. And again, I'm going to go mix that with a tiny, tiny bit of water. Okay, so can you see how much water I've added here? I've added maybe two teaspoons worth. I'm going to mix that up and see if it's the right consistency. Okay, so this one I can see is a little bit more runny. It still has a watery consistent consistency. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow in to try and thicken that up. You can also add a teaspoon of flour to thicken it up as well, but I prefer to just go with paint. And I still want it thicker. I want it thicker than before, really, because I don't want it to flow all down the sides. Okay, so that's there. So now I'm going to do the exact same, but I'm not going to pour this one over the whole thing. I'm going to do a really light drizzle across the top. Okay, just like that. And now I'm going to do exactly the same with the pink. So I'm going to go wash this out and I'm going to just use my crimson red with a tiny bit of water. I'm going to try and make this one thicker though because as you can see this one's spread out a little bit. But that's fine. I'm going to go, and go ahead and mix up my red and do the exact same thing. Okay, and now I've just mixed up my red with about a teaspoon of water and you can see this time, let's see if I can show you, it's a little bit thicker. So I think I'm going to pour this one. I think I'm going to go in the same direction actually and try and aim just on top of my yellow. Okay, so this is how it's looking at the minute. And all that is left to do is to add some of my sprinkles onto the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now while it's still wet. Okay. And now all that is left to do is to wait for this to dry and remember that when it's done, it is not a real donut, it is purely for show. 
Okay everyone, so this is the finished donut. You can see it's all dry now and it's got my sprinkles stuck to the top. The underneath is a little bit messy, but that doesn't matter because it's gonna be displayed this way anyway. So have fun, good luck. Remember you can change up the colors and do as many different designs as you want. You could even not leave the hole in the middle so you have a full donut. You could display them again in a Krispy Kreme box just to make them look real. But have fun, have a go and let me know how you get on.